what's going on everybody this is island hopper tv and today we're coming to you from toronto ontario canada we're going to show you the best things to do while visiting here there will be timestamps below in the description so you can bounce around from location to location first up on the list is scotia bank arena now this is where the toronto maple leafs hockey team plays as well as the toronto raptors depending on the time of year when you're here you will be able to watch some of these games and that is during the winter late fall early spring months so try to get to one of these games while in toronto be sure to check out their city parks the most popular one is high park and what you can see here in toronto is also going to be cherry blossoms and those are here during late april early may so if you like cherry blossoms go for a walk in the park take pictures at one of the city parks another one is withrow park and rouge national urban park the best park to visit though year round is going to be Riverdale Park, which is right along Broadview Avenue where you can have a picnic. Next up is going to be go to Blue Jays games. The Blue Jays are very popular and their stadium is right next to the CN Tower where they play is Rogers Center. The tickets are affordable and nothing quite like taking in a summer baseball game up here in Toronto. And the good news is the roof is retractable so if it's too hot they will close the roof so you can stay cool. The next thing to do is get out on Lake Ontario whether it's a water taxi or a ferry boat or a booze cruise just getting out on the water. Definitely something to do, especially in the summertime. In the wintertime, you're gonna see Lake Ontario is gonna be frozen over. So take advantage when that snow does melt, get out there on the water and check it out. Beautiful coastline. A water taxi ticket is around $10. Next up, we're headed over to Casa Loma. It's actually a Gothic style castle. It's a mansion, seven floors high. So you can check this place out while in Midtown Toronto. Now here we are at the CN Tower, the former tallest building in the world, standing at 1,815 feet. You can actually go to the top of this. They also have a restaurant that takes 72 minutes to do a full rotation around. They also have the edge walk where you can actually brave the edge here. It looks like it's bungee jumping, but it's actually not it's just basically leaning right out over the edge with a cord with a guide so if you wanted to do that tickets range anywhere between 50 to 100 dollars per person from my experience visiting the cn tower is probably the number one thing you'll want to do while in toronto here we are at the toronto harbor front right along the shores of lake ontario here you'll find several different condo towers parks beaches Many different dining options and breweries. Breweries are a really popular thing in Toronto, by the way. And then they have a nice life here right along Harbor Front Center. Over the last 20 years, downtown Toronto has undergone a massive facelift and building boom, as you will see, for those of you who haven't been here for a while. And the population is now over 6 million people making it the largest city in Canada. If you're looking for a popular market, be sure to check out the St. Lawrence Market. But another thing to consider is the many indoor markets here in Toronto because of the harsh cold winters, which leads us to the Toronto subway and the metro system overall. So getting underground, taking the metro is a great way to get away from all of that cold snowy weather up top. And they also have two light rail lines. Next up is Toronto City Hall and the Nathan Phillips Square. This here is where you'll see that popular Toronto sign that's in many of the advertisements for the city. The actual square is used as a gathering place for celebrations and other festivals. Around 1.8 million people actually visited the square in 2022. So very popular place to come visit, take a picture. By the way, the City Hall is the most active in all of Canada. So if you happen to be in Toronto during New Year's or the Cavalcade of Lights, Remembrance Day, this is where you want to be if you want to be around a lot of people. Another popular thing to do in Toronto is go out to the islands. These are a must visit if you're here during the summer, especially they have parks, they have festivals, they have activities, just walking around. And believe it or not, they do have some beaches out here. So if you're going to take one of those water taxis, you would be coming out here on a 13 minute ride to the Toronto Islands. The three main islands are going to be Wards Island, Center Island and Hanlon's Point. Center Island being what is considered Toronto Island. Now there is also an amusement park out here called Centerville Amusement Park. So that's fun outdoor activities for the whole family. If you guys want to check that out. 
Other activities include renting a bike, riding a bike, anything you can do with a bike in Toronto is very popular, hiking, and then of course swimming at the beaches, or just walking the paths, enjoying the beautiful outdoor environment. Another area to explore is going to be the entertainment district right here in downtown. It's concentrated around King Street West between University Avenue and Spadina. They have theaters, performing arts centers, and lots of other activities going on down here in the entertainment area. And as we continue to show you around Toronto, if you're new here, please consider subscribing and liking the video as we continue to show you around. Next up, we're headed to Union Station. Now, the cool thing about Union Station is you can go east or west. You can go east towards Montreal and Quebec City, or you can go west towards the inland provinces and then all the way towards Vancouver by train. Check out the train routes all across southern Canada. The rail network for the most part goes along the south, but you can go a bit north if you would like. The main rail system you want to check for passenger rail is going to be called Via Rail, and they actually have an app. You can download it. In the summertime, it does get expensive and quite busy, so try to book ahead of time to save money and also get a reservation. If it's your first time and you don't really want to go long distance, I recommend just simply taking the train from Toronto to Montreal. The route takes around five hours. Another activity is going to the Toronto Zoo. They have many different birds, giraffes, and gorillas, tigers, lots of different animals here, including polar bears. Next up is local food. That's going to include smoked meat sandwiches, barbecue, chicken. They've also got poutine, which is a famous French fry and chili kind of cheese. Then they have sushi pizza. They also have butter tarts. Tim Hortons coffee is very popular here. And a great diversity in international cuisine for you to enjoy while visiting Toronto. Next up is heading over to Chinatown, which is a very culturally rich area. They've got a diversity in food here in particular. They've also got the Indian biryani restaurant. They have Japanese, Korean, and various other Asian cuisines here. Now here we are at Dundas Square, which is actually at the intersection of Yong and Dundas. And it's like the Times Square of Canada, really right here in Toronto. They have the Toronto International Film Festival, the Luminata, and so many other, and so many other city cultural festivals held here. Really a fun, bustling area. And I would say this is probably number two or three on my list of top places that you should definitely consider visiting while here in Toronto alongside the CN Tower and the Toronto Islands. Those are like the big three. The square right now is called Dundas Square, named after Henry Dundas, a Scottish lawyer and politician. There is a conversation taking place to rename the area Lightfoot, so maybe when you see this, that might just be the name. Now we're headed two hours out of town to Niagara Falls. The Canadian side is considered the best side to view the falls, better than the American side. Uh, this is definitely a top thing to do in all of Canada and certainly here in Toronto. If you guys can get down to the Niagara Falls, you probably won't regret it. It is quite the sight to see. The park and viewing area is open 365 days and it is free. If you like museums, you should definitely consider checking out the Royal Ontario Museum where they have 13 million pieces of art here. It ranks among the top 10 cultural institutions in North America and is Canada's largest and most comprehensive museum. Next up would be explore the many cathedrals here. They have the St. Andrew's Church, St. George's Greek Orthodox Church, Trinity St. Paul, St. Patrick's Catholic Church, so many different cathedrals for you to go inside and check out. The architecture in the stained glass is some of the best you'll find anywhere in North America. By the way, if you plan to visit Canada, do check the link description below where we will put videos for Quebec City, Vancouver, and Montreal, so definitely check those below in the description. Next up is going to be the Distillery District. This is actually one of the oldest areas in Toronto, opened in 1832. You can go inside here and you'll see lots of different wine shops and people drinking and enjoying the outdoor environment with live music. Really a fun place to go on a weekend on an evening, even during the week, you can still come down here and find some activity. But if you like to just hang out and lounge at these wine bars, just come down here to the distillery.
And if it is going to be your first time in Toronto, I do recommend doing a hop on hop off bus tour because you'll get a really good idea of what there is to see and do and go to the main core areas and then you see something that you like then you just go back to that area that's kind of how i found young and Danda street as well as the distillery area you can really see a lot of the city get a lot of information and history by taking one of these tours hop on hop off bus can be good in most areas but in particular here in toronto i do recommend it with that being said, that's going to conclude this episode of Island Hopper TV from Toronto. If you guys enjoyed this and you're coming to Canada, check, check out our Montreal and Quebec City guides as well as our Vancouver video and even Calgary. We'll put those below. Or you can just click right now and watch Montreal or Vancouver. See you on the next one. Thank you to all the subscribers and channel members who helped make these videos possible.